mechanism of the spacecraft hatch. Later today, that would become important. But it was now June 3rd. A year had ended for these men. A year devoted to a single goal, flying a four-day mission in Gemini 4. America's first long-duration mission, Gemini 4, would complete 62 revolutions. The flight plan called for the spacecraft to be inserted into orbit at 32.5 degrees north latitude at 185 statute miles in altitude over Bermuda. People were already adding a new word to their vocabularies, EVA. It stood for extravehicular activity. Some were uncertain whether you said EVA or EVA, but regardless of the pronunciation, it would become an abbreviation of our time. The flight plan called for EVA to begin on the second orbit. Somewhere over Hawaii, the pilot was to open the hatch of a depressurized cabin and stand up. Over the west coast of the United States, he would leave the spacecraft and expose himself to space. For 12 minutes, he would perform maneuvers over the United States. He would return to Gemini 4 and continue the mission as the spacecraft neared the night side of the Earth over the Atlantic. This was the flight plan. A special EVA suit and life support pack had been designed and tested by NASA engineers in the Crew Systems Division. The EVA helmet has three visors. The inner visor is the normal suit visor which seals in suit pressure. Over it are two special visors. They are detachable and need not be worn throughout the entire mission. The outer or sun visor is easily recognized from its gold coating. It reflects both visible light and infrared rays. With it attached, only 10% of the sun's visible light is admitted. Beneath the sun visor, but not visible here, is an inner protective visor made of polycarbonate plastic. The Gemini suit has layers of aluminized mylar, nylon, and felt. In combination, they protect the astronaut against temperature and space particles. Special overgloves are worn to guard against extremes of space temperature if the astronaut should grasp the spacecraft during EVA. As the astronaut leaves Gemini, he is attached by a supporting umbilical line, 25 feet long. The umbilical is actually one assembly consisting of three elements, a nylon tension line, electrical wiring, and an umbilical line. The nylon line, or tether, is shorter than the umbilical line. It takes all loads exerted during EVA and can withstand 1,000 pounds of pull. The electrical wiring enables the astronaut to maintain direct communication with his command pilot. It also records biomedical readings for ground surgeons. The umbilical line furnishes oxygen to the suit from the spacecraft's primary oxygen system. The life support pack mounted on the parachute harness contains an emergency oxygen bottle. If the umbilical line should fail, the astronaut would have enough oxygen to support him for at least nine minutes, more than enough time for him to return to the spacecraft safely in an emergency. The pilot also carries a small maneuvering unit during EVA, the so-called space gun. Designed by NASA engineers of the Flight Crew Support Division, the gun provides a limited amount of thrust from compressed oxygen for basic maneuvering experiments. Gemini 4 is counting down on the launch pad. As the count goes into its final two hours, the crew arrives at pad 19. There have been no holds. The weather is good. The astronauts enter the elevator and ride it to the Erector White Room, which surrounds Gemini 4. The crew enters the spacecraft. The hatches are sealed, 7.32 Eastern Standard Time. The crew is now a part of the countdown. They begin checking out the spacecraft systems. It is T minus 100 minutes. The launch vehicle and spacecraft continue the clean count, interrupted only by a bulky erector which didn't want to lower properly. That cost us some time but presented no serious problem. At T minus 30 minutes, the pad was cleared. Now there is just a spacecraft, launch vehicle, and two men on top of it. All systems are good at this time. The launch control at the Cape. T-minus 10 minutes and counting. 
six minutes before launch. The spacecraft test conductor signed off to the spacecraft with these final words. Okay, Jim, have a good flight. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition is started. Lift off. At 10.16 Eastern Standard Time, Gemini 4 was on its way. We have a roll program initiated. Flight to Quantum have started. And in sync. And in sync. Right. Roll Flight program completed. McDivitt report. And the pitch program has been initiated. Right. Mark 50 seconds and we're go. Guidance reports to go. The flight trajectory looks very, very close to right on the nominal value. That's good. Flight data pretty nice, but we're okay. Flight photo, good on Mod 3, a little high. And Jimmy McDivitt reports Gemini 4 is go for staging, which will occur in a very few seconds. Just go. We have staging, and it's been confirmed here on the ground. Trust looks good. Gemini 4 entered orbit with an insertion velocity of 25,745 feet per second, within 11 feet per second of planned velocity. The apogee of the first orbit was 177.6 statute miles. The perigee, 100.8 statute miles. Command pilot McDivitt started to work at once, attempting to fly an airplane formation with the second stage of the launch vehicle. The full resources of NASA in Houston were on hand to support Gemini 4. From a new three-storied building, flight controllers at the Manned Spacecraft Center assumed direct control of the mission for the first time in the space program. The mission director now checked the status of a possible rendezvous. Ask him about his track with the launch vehicle. Uh, I have it this time. It's directly below me, about uh, four or five feet up with a truck Everything seemed favorable at that time. But as the first orbit progressed, the second stage of the launch vehicle drew away. Roger, Brian. Uh, we still have the booster. We're out quite a ways from it now. Uh, it's taken a little more fuel than we had anticipated. To really make a major effort to close this last thing or to save the fuel? The answer was almost immediate from the mission director. You might tell him, uh, as far as we're concerned, we want to save the fuel. We're concerned about the light time more than we are matching that booster. Okay. And that was it. Okay. The second stage of the launch vehicle went on to become simply Space Object 1391. It would burn up over the Mid-Atlantic two days later. Yeah, my phone. Okay, we're giving you a go for your EVA at this time. Okay. The crew started their checklist for EVA, but Command Pilot McDivitt decided not to rush things. He elected to go for EVA on the third revolution. Hawaii, Gemini 4. Go ahead, Gemini 4. Next pass around. I don't think you want to try. Very good. Tell Roger, I understand. Next that. pass around. Tell him we're happy with that. Most of the world waited 100 miles below. The crew had completed final preparations. The cabin was depressurized and the hatch open. Coming up on Hawaii, McDivitt reported that he was satisfied and ready to begin EVA. Search, you ready to have him get out? Roger, flight, we're go. He's got some uh, nice elevated rates, which we expected, and uh, he's, he's really speeded it up, but he looks great. Let's go. Okay. Hawaii, Houston flight. Houston flight, Hawaii, Capcom, go. Tell him we're ready to have him get out when he is. Gemini 4, Hawaii, Capcom. We just had word from Houston. We're ready to have you get out whenever 